Hello everyone and welcome to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. That's right, I have upgraded to 0.23.5 and that is going to make this a rather complicated episode. It's going to be complicated because there are a lot of changes involved. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to be basically bug hunting and uh, I've already tried this out on various installs, uh, uh, trying to see whether there will be bugs, but I just got a new one. I, uh, toolbar isn't showing up. Uh, now, I did upgrade Toolbar to the latest version of Toolbar, but it's not showing up, so that's a little bit worrisome. Um, well, I guess we should uh, start from the most uh, egregious change, if you will, so let's go to the tracking station. Okay, of course, with uh, 0.23.5, what naturally comes is... Oh, well, here's Toolbar. Okay. Uh, well, let's have Hide, Key Thing, Controls, Kerbal Alarm Clock in this view. In each view, you can pick which uh, controls you want. And let's... Uh, actually, let's get rid of the grid overlay and then Hide, Key Thing, Controls. Okay, so it's Earth, and uh, we're at Cape Canaveral. And so the backstory explanation for this is that... Uh, seeing that the Kerbals were uh, so uh, plucky and successful with their space adventures, um, NASA has offered to allow them use of some of the facilities at Cape Canaveral. And even though it's less advantageous than their previous equatorial location, the Kerbals being uh, romantics, hopeless romantics if you will, have decided to take the chance to launch from Cape Canaveral. And I'm sure there are other attendant benefits in terms of research opportunities and stuff like that. So uh, so we're there, and I've moved Remote Tech over there as well, so the Remote Tech dot is there. Another glitch that I knew was coming was the fact that uh, we don't have the Remote Tech controls or the lines here. However, we will get them in the map view. So it is a problem here, but not a problem in the map view. And so we've got Earth. It's, it's Earth, and... Uh, and uh, it's real solar system as well. And uh, there's the... Okay, so what I did was I found the section in the persistent file that adds asteroids. It's a very small section, actually. I was surprised. It's just a tiny little block. Uh, it's a scenario called Discoverable Objects. I'm hoping that's all I have to copy into this. So what I did was I created a new save and then copied that block from that save to, uh, to get that particular seed for the generation of the asteroids and uh, copied it into this save. So now we do have asteroids in uh, 0.23.5 and I'm hoping they work out. I don't even know if there are actual asteroids there right now. I just know that it's showing these things. So we've got that going for us. Um, the whole system is inclined as a uh, real solar system. The new version has it inclined to simulate the orbital inclination of the planet Earth. So we've got that as well. Um, but but uh, my satellites are rather out of position right now, right? First of all, they're all in this equatorial plane, which is not quite in communication with uh, the KSC. Uh, it, it, it's, it's okay when they get to their um, apoapsis, but once they reach their periapsis, they're very much not in line. Um, GSTAT, because of... Uh, sort of the way the orbit is being calculated, GSTAT is now wildly out of uh, sync. It uh, obviously should be over here. So our first order of business in this episode is actually going to be to move GSTAT over. But before I do that, we've got to talk over some of the other changes I've made. I've uh, deleted Universe Replacer because that was mainly to put a nice texture on Kerbin. And of course now Kerbin has a nice texture thanks to Real Solar System. Um, environmental and visual enhancements has been upgraded to the one with volumetric clouds. I've had to add active texture management basic because uh, I, I never wanted to add texture management to this particular installation, but I can't avoid it. Uh, the RAM limit was just too much and I would have to be dumping parts that I need for the Saturn V for instance. Um, I added signal delay. I might unadd signal delay depending on how horrible it happens to be um, 
again, it's a delicate balance between getting things interesting and challenging and making things tedious. So that's that's a thing. Oh, we found an asteroid right there. Let's track this one just for the heck of it, shall we? Ooh, a class E, even. Uh, I probably wish I didn't see that. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's, let's, let me just stop tracking that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are not ready for, uh, for, uh, asteroid rendezvous at this point. Uh, so let's, let's not go there. But we have that opportunity, uh, sh in theory, should we pursue it. Okay, so... Yeah, let's let's go to the tech tree. In my testing, the tech tree was actually the most curious thing. First of all, it has a bad habit of going to the original, the default tech tree, tech tree first, and then flipping to this one, and that's a little bit disconcerting. Um, I've added one mod that's hull cam, so let's see uh, what parts. Oh, and I've added the FASA launch clamps, so I've got hull. Uh, cam and those uh, those launch clamps and what's this one? Okay, that's a camera. So these are all the cameras uh, you would have seen in my 200th uh, video special. I use those cameras in order to get those interesting shots. Real shoots has been updated, so that's why we had to unlock the new real shoot. Uh, so hull cam and that looks like uh, I guess that's part of hull cam. I hope. Okay, um, let's just make sure, yeah, that's another camera, okay, and, oh yes, uh, the new version of Nova Punch has this Freya uh, command pod, so I've got that. I dumped most of the um, specialty parts in, uh, in uh, Nova Punch, but I kept that just in case, and uh, there's the real shoot. And let's see what we've got here. Uh, I guess I must have left in some tanks from uh, from Nova Punch. I'll unlock them for now. I might delete them, but uh, that's no problem. I, I don't think that should cause a glitch or anything. So FASA launch clamps, um, explosive bolt. I don't know what that's from. That should be the real shoot and more real shoot, okay. And the umbilical tower from FASA, what well, I really wanted actually. So uh, I haven't updated to the latest realistic progression light tech tree because there seems to be still some fixes pending on that. Um, but I'm looking forward to that because a lot might not work uh, without it. In particular, my uh, the fairings are a little bit annoying at this point. Okay, I think I've unlocked everything. So it was mostly just the cameras and the FASA parts and real shoots. That's what we needed to uh, get. Now we've got 588 science and it occurs to me that what we really need is extendable solar panels. But I have to figure out whether I can see. There's this, this is a retractable solar panel, okay. Hmm, not the... I, I prefer to unlock the default ones because I trust them more, obviously. Another change I made was to the the tiny little... whatchamacallit... Uh, the whack Corporal that I used for the final stage the, uh, that I was going to use to land that probe on the moon. That, sta that rocket had the issue of having infinite ignitions and uh, completely variable thrust, so uh, thrust went from 0 to 100%. I've adjusted that so that it has only a hundred ignitions only, and uh, its thrust is limited from fifty percent to a hundred percent. So why is there? Oh, uh, the tech tree is sort of bleeding into this view. Okay, well I'm not seeing any better solar panels, unless I missed it. It's really just this one. Let me uh, let me wait on uh, unlocking that for now. Let me uh, go to the VAB to see how things are over there. So I think I've mentioned all the key 
issues and changes that I've made. Uh, so let's load up the Vern for SETI 3 and see if it actually works. One thing I'm planning on doing is installing Mission Controller and I'm not planning to activate the plugin, I just want to see the cost of our vehicles in Mission Control. Obviously it's not real cost at all. But uh, just for a point of reference, I think that might be interesting. Okay, so this is Vern 473, so it's been changed and uh, I'll discuss the changes I made. I used the changes to verify that this install was good. I have the old install just in case we need to revert to it. Uh, so this was a new install and I wanted to test it, which means uh, somewhat testing that I can build a rocket too. And what I did was I uh, went with some of the changes uh, recommended by numerous people, including Nathan Kell. Uh, for instance, this whole thing where I put the hovering node above the probe and attach a nose cone to it so that I can release the fairings while keeping this attached. And I've got a decoupler here to uh, actually decouple the probe. This is how it's supposed to be done. I just, uh, for some reason, I didn't understand that. And uh, now what we might need to do is replace this one with, uh, I just want to make sure that we've got, uh, it looks like it was updated, but I want to make sure that everything is working fine. And uh, you'll notice Ullage Simulation is disabled for this particular rocket. It is hypergolic and I think uh, it should be more or less like a overgrown RCS port. Anyway, so I've gone with uh, conic fairings this time because of course we've got the cone on top. Could have tried to use the... which cone? You know, uh, something like the default one. If I can, f oh, it's, it would be under aerodynamics, uh, like this one. But it turns out that the fairings look horrible with it, no matter what you do. So I skipped that. The rest of the rocket is the same until we get down here. Oh, uh, I adjusted the position of the launch clamps a bit. Uh, until we get down here, where I've added solid rocket boosters. Huh. I see a problem. Why don't I have uh, Mechjeb? Mechjeb should be in all of the probe parts. Did I forget to add that in this install? Shouldn't be. Hmm, I might have. Okay, well, uh, fine. Uh, let me just slap Mechjeb on quickly so we can see what's going on here and I'll have to make sure to add that in in the uh, in the installation it should have been it's a I copied the original folder first so that's sort of a surprise and worrisome okay no oh maybe I need to update Mechjeb aha okay that's fair enough alright that that's alright I'll do that later we're not going to launch this this time. We need to fix GSTAT and our satellite network first. Uh, so that's not a thing that we're going... Oh, I didn't even notice that before. Ejection power. Hmm. Okay. So uh, the point is that... Do we have... I wonder if we have... Uh, I wonder if Kerbal Engineer will help here. Not very much. The point is that uh, because we don't have the surface thrust to weight ratio here, uh, the point is that the solid rocket boosters increase the surface thrust to weight ratio such that I could extend the center center tank. Uh, so the first stage is longer and that means that we get more juice out of it and basically we've got more delta V all the way though this isn't really showing the right stats at all. So this is the 473 with solid rocket boosters and we'll use it once we've got everything set up properly but we can't do that right now. First we need to get GSTAT uh, in the right place so let, let's turn to GSTAT and uh, focus on how to reposition it. After I get this I should have FAR, um, I guess so, TAC life support build aid, sounds good. Alright, so let's get out there. 
Okay, so here we are with GStat, and as you can see, it's pointing completely the wrong way, and has no connection. Yay! Um, <laughs> uh, there's a little bit of glitchiness on this display, it looks like. I don't know if I should uh, be worried about that or not. We are on Earth time instead of Kerbin time, so 24 hour time. And, of course, in this case, it's completely justifiable. Uh, looks like if Hytos probe got within communication of the KSE, Kennedy Space Center now, uh, we should be able to do it. I decided not to go with any other launch location for now. I might change my mind on that. Oh, that uh, we've got uh, through TDRS Polar. So you can see now we've got signal delay. So that's all good. I should configure some of the buttons in this display. Always have to check on... You know, let's get uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Alright. So we've got signal now. The question is what do we do with it? And the way I figure it... A quarter of Earth's orbit is six hours, and so it looks like we're a little bit more than six hours off of where we need to be, probably seven hours or so. So what I want to do is drop our orbit so that we are going faster. But let's not do the entire adjustment on a single orbit, because that will cost a lot of fuel, and we might need to reposition this satellite in the future. Let's say we do it uh, a little bit more than two, two hours per orbit. So this is a two and a half hours per orbit. Doesn't quite come out right. Uh, this will be two hours and twenty-four minutes per orbit. Still, I want to do it in three orbits. Is what I'm going. So two hours and twenty minutes per orbit. In three orbits, we'll adjust by. So what I'm doing is, uh, see, it's uh, 1 hour and 10 minutes shorter to periapsis and 1 hour 10 minutes shorter back. So that's 2 hour and 20 minutes we gain each time we go around. And in 3 orbits we'll gain 7 hours. Okay, so that's my plan. And of course if we do end up in the right position, we should be in the communication with the KSC. There's no problem there. Uh, there is another problem I have to fix in that some of these uh, satellites might be now within Kerbin's atmosphere because the atmosphere has been extended to 180 kilometers, so I'll have to check that out. But let's uh, deal with this first. And I'm going to use the flight computer because we've got a delay and I get annoyed by that sometimes. Okay, 134 meters per second is quite a lot for this particular probe, and boy do I need to update MechJeb because this is going to be very annoying otherwise. Um, yeah. Alright, uh, I hope I'm not uh, messing up MechJeb by doing this. Uh, uh, doing all this without having MechJeb updated. Now I think this this particular WAC Corporal has not been updated because once you slap it on and launch it, it uh, it keeps the stats it has. So this one does have infinite ignitions, as you can see. Um, though it added the hypergolic field that I put on there, that's strange. I decided to add the hypergolic field I added for the ignitions, but it doesn't have any uh, limit to the ignitions. Oh well. Okay, well, good enough. I'll... Alright, I'll, I'll let it do it precisely. Fair enough. Uh, meters per second. And we'll just go full throttle on it. And burn. Okay, okay, stop that, stop that. Okay, so we should be all configured properly. Let's get that out of the way, just to be safe. And uh, three orbits, right? Now it's going to be a little bit harder for me to get the 
timing right without MacJeb because MacJeb shows you the orbital period and so I can't see that right now. Uh, I'm keeping an eye on electric charge as well just uh, in case you're worried about that. But And it is depleting. That's a little bit worrying. Why would it be depleting? I mean we should be... well I guess we reoriented to do the burn. Uh, where is the sun? Oh, the sun is not even in the right plane anymore. That's interesting. Okay, um, so for to go around, let's let's see if I can manually do it. Mm. I wonder if power consumption has been changed in some of the mods in this version. I don't know. It's possible. It just seems like we're drawing more power than we should be. Oh, at least that than this probe has uh, drawn before. Still just drawing that much power. Hmm. Maybe we should tilt like no the other way. Hmm. No, not not what I was going for. Uh this it's a better point at the sun tiny improvement we might have to replace this the satellite oh and it did take uh, hypergolic fluid for the ignite so functionally we have only 100 ignitions on this one because it uh, took the hypergolic fluid and it'll eventually run out of that. Interesting. Okay. I don't know whether the throttle is properly ranged or not. Uh, well, I guess I could check that. Let's let's do that uh, on the next burn. Well, I can't do any more to fix our orientation to the sun. Our entire satellite network uh, could be in jeopardy if the power consumption has been changed at all. And it looks like it has been. What could have done that? I don't think I updated anything that should have done that. Well, anyway, I. Uh, we need one more orbit to finish things. I can turn off temporarily the dish that is doesn't have any target. At least we can save our satellite like that. But eventually we'll have to turn that back on, obviously. That's its main function. Does it look like we're two hours behind? I think so. We might be a little bit ahead this time. Okay, let's let's plot. F so we're gonna be a little bit ahead, but that's fine. Let me just plot the necessary burn to circularize and get into geosync or geostationary, if you will. Now with uh, MechJeb I would be able to see the exact period so then I wouldn't have to worry about uh, you know figuring out the numbers particularly. The correct number is 35,786 and I'm just looking for the average, an average that comes close to that. And I think we're pretty much there. Unsurprisingly the burn is approximately what it um, 
what it was to drop the orbit. Okay, uh, well, let's tell you what, uh, what we, we, we can do is we can aim for 50% power, and if it's 3.5 or so, 3.35, uh, then we know that uh, the throttle on this has not been fixed. Uh, if it is instead something like uh, 4.55 around there, then we know it has been. Okay, uh, node first. Okay, and you can do the burn. While you're doing that, let's see. Uh, 3.4 kilonewtons. So, no, the thrust has not been fixed on this. It has its full range of thrust. It's just that the ignitions have been fixed. Okay, thank you. You can stop spinning now. And let's see, where is the sun again? Still there. Seems like that would be the best. And it's recharging. Unfortunately, it's only recharging because I've deactivated this antenna. But, uh, during missions, we... I don't know how long this... Uh, well, it should be able to hold out for at least three days, right? Uh, we were able to go around... I think we would have been able to go around three times without depleting all our electric charge. So, it'd hold out for three days, which is not enough to get to the moon. Hmm. Okay, uh, let's... Let's go to the tracking station and see the state of our other satellites and check whether they're within Kerbin's, uh, not Kerbin, Earth's new atmosphere. And if so, uh, fix that. Alright, so tracking station time. Okay, let's check these guys out. Now, Stayputnik was already a uh, weird thing that's not supposed to. Looks like uh, Bermuda is safe. Madrid is safe, barely. Uh, Uragity doesn't matter, cause it's, but it is safe. Uh, Auroral Valley needs a boost. But I should wait until I upgrade MechJeb for that, because I need to time it so that it's a three hour orbit. And if I try and do it right now, it wouldn't be right. It's on rails anyway, so it's not a too big a problem. Polar is fine. High toss probe was never supposed to survive anyway. These were launch stages that happened to have communications array on them. Uh, Uragity Advance is all right. Obviously, that's all right. Pole Star is all right. Okay, so and there's the weird Forsetti that we can grab now, right? Uh, I think we're going to get the the new claw eventually. I I, I don't know if it's in the tech tree actually. If it's not a tech tree, I hope that the new version of Realistic Progression Light adds it to the tech tree. I, sh I, I assume it should. And in that case, we'll be able to claw the Forsetti uh, and bring it back in so that we don't have to worry about it hanging out there. Ooh, there's a tiny one there too, huh? Yeah, we don't have the claw yet, so we can't bother with such things. Um... So, okay, so the only one really is this Aurora Valley, and I need to wait until I get Mechjib, just so I can see the orbital period while I'm doing it to make sure that I've got that right. Um, not bad. Not bad, as far as the situation is concerned. I think what we need to do then is to try and get a new G-Stat up. So... I need to renovate GSTAT, get some new solar panels on it to make sure it can charge upright, and put it somewhat askew, say around here. And then, because uh, if we've got one over here, let's say, then uh, if the moon for some reason is on the opposite side of this one, let's say the moon is over here, it won't be able to communicate with this GSTAT, but it will be able to communicate with this other one. So that's the first step, I think, uh, into in uh, creating a reliable communication system with the moon. We didn't really need that for any mission within this this sphere, 
but for missions outside the sphere we will need it. So let's go to the VAB and see how to build such a thing and we'll start with the GSTAT as a basis.